Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live this evening, a prophetic segment, very much in-depth look at the third intifada that has begun in Israel. And why is it happening now? What is the reason behind all of this? And you're going to find out that there is a lot of things that are going on right now as we speak. There is a reason, there is a plot behind it. We're going to see very soon Hezbollah attack Israel from the north. Without, without a question, they're going to attack Israel from the north. Now, you may not know why, but I'm going to show you why tonight. We're going to go back into the history this year, look at a lot of different things. Why is Russia in Syria now? We know Ezekiel 38 prophecy is being set up right before our eyes. The Psalm 83 war, the conspiracy, as people have called it, is a Psalm 83 war. Actually, it's a, it's a, um, a covenant that is being made between different people that are involved here. And now we're about to see the battle itself strike Israel. The Intifada is only part of this. So let's begin and let's take a look. Let's look at the current news right now. And by the way, those of you that are watching here on live stream right now as this broadcast is live, if you go to YouTube a little bit later here, we will be uploading all the different files here to the, uh, to the right of the screen there. I believe it's to the left on your side, right on my side. And uh, you'll actually be able to see the different footages and pictures that we'll be using on this. I really encourage you to do that because we're covering a lot of information here and I really want you to understand what's going on. As we speak right now, uh, the third intifada has definitely begun in Israel. Hamas out of the Gaza Strip has also joined into the battle. The different uh, Arab people living in what is termed the West Bank, uh, and they are called the Palestinians or the PLO Liberation Organization, is also encouraging the violence to continue and to uprise and also Mahmoud Abbas is calling on the different uh, militaries that, that, that are calling on the jihad, which is called the holy war in the Arabic language. He is calling now for the, for the jihad, the holy war to begin. And the stage is definitely set. But what's going to happen next? Let's look at some of the news that's happening even today in Israel. Uh, we actually, uh, let me just show you quickly here on the screen here. Uh, earlier today, there was a, a video that was, that was captured, that was shared on Israel National News, where a woman, uh, uh, an Arab woman who is uh, classified as a terrorist, is, this is happening in Afula. Those of you that are not aware of where Afula is, if you've ever visited Israel, when your tour bus leaves Haifa, headed up to the Galilee, Afula is this the little town in the valley there that's about halfway in between the two locations. Uh, anyway, there was a terrorist attack there just the other day. A man that was stabbed. Now a woman comes in with wielding a knife. Police have her surrounded. And she's warned many times. She's screaming and yelling back at the police. And finally, they shoot her down to the ground. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of outcry over that because no doubt many people are going to say, why couldn't she be taken? But she is wielding a knife. And Israel, keep in mind, though, Israeli police have already been attacked numerous times uh, here in the last week. They've, they've stabbed police officers. Uh, so it's very much, it is a credible threat. Once she's got that knife in her hand, you get near her, she's going to stick that knife in you. Uh, there is definitely no doubt about that whatsoever. Um, anyway, uh, so they, they caught this dramatic footage, Israel National News published it. It was definitely done with a cell phone is what we can see by looking at the image there. Uh, three Arab rioters killed trying to storm the Gaza border. Another article here on Israel National News, ongoing clashes uh, leave 17 injured, and Gaza responds to Hamas calls to join in the Intifada against Israel. Uh, three Palestinian rioters were killed, 17 wounded, on Friday near Gaza's border, according to Gaza medical sources. Uh, Ahamid al uh, Hirabawi, uh, Shadi Dawala, and uh, Abed al Wahidi, all aged 20, were killed when soldiers responded after use through rocks and other projectiles at them, attempting, attempting to break through the border. An army spokesman said the incident was continuing, adding that about 200 Palestinians had approached the fence while hurling rocks and rolling burning tires towards security forces. Forces on the site responded with fire toward the main instigators to prevent their progress and disperse the riot, uh, she said. The spokesman confirmed five hits, 
without elaborating. In a uh, sermon for weekly Muslim prayers at a mosque in Gaza City, Hamas Gaza chief uh, Ismail Khania said, we are calling for the strengthening and increasing of the intifada. So there's definitely an intifada going on in Israel. And by the way, there was also a Jewish man uh, that also attacked four uh, Arab Bedouins uh, they were, uh, two were moderate to serious condition in the hospital. The other were just lightly injured and under confession by the police, he does admit that he does it as a retaliation. And uh, Israel doesn't need this type problems. Let me just say this to my Jewish brothers and sisters. Defend yourself. If it requires a war, the military will have to deal with the war. Defend yourself. Stand your ground. But don't get involved in retaliation attacks. That's exactly what we don't need. Um, anyhow, let's continue on here. Another one here. Um, uh, this was another bizarre incident here. Karat Araba police arrest Jews after Arab rocks, uh, after Arab rock attacks. Now this was just bizarre in itself. Instead of the people that were injured by the, uh, the, the attacks, uh, the attackers, uh, the, the, the Arab terrorists, they're the ones that are actually arrested, the ones that are injured by the rocks. It says four people, three adults, a 15-year-old, were arrested in Kirat Araba on Friday afternoon during a protest march over the stabbing attack earlier in the day in the area, according to legal rights group uh, uh, Hunenu. According to the report, at least one of the detainees was injured in a rock-throwing attack by Palestinian Arabs staging a counter-protest at the site. Israel police apparently arrested the Jewish protesters at the site, but not the Arabs trying to escalate the situation into even more violence. Remember, we showed you from Jerusalem in the old city the exact same type situation. The Jewish people peacefully singing the Psalms, singing prayer songs, and at the same time, the uh, Palestinians, the Arab uh, attackers there, lunge into the Jewish people to start and to instigate the war and the fight. So, what does this all mean, though? Why are we having an intifada now? That's where the big question really comes up. Because sometimes we might just look at all these riots and all this fighting and stuff, and we just assume that it's just another intifada, uh, there's just an uprising. The Palestinian people want their own state. And yet we're totally oblivious as to the reason really why this is going on. I said to you a little, just recently how that Russia is in Syria because of the oil. The United States has actually been helping finance the, 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 the drilling and the, and, the, and the discoveries of the oil in the Golan Heights so the United States has a military interest with Israel as well. Of course, Ob the Obama administration has a very shaky, um, shaky uh, situation going on there with uh, Israel because of the way Obama has treated the Jewish people. And at the same time, Russia has come in totally. No one has challenged Russia whatsoever, built themselves an air base in Syria, and now has taken over the fight with ISIS as well as dealing with the Free Syrian Army, all the people that are backed by the United States that has caused the war that we're seeing going on in Syria, the internal conflict, the whole thing started by the United States. Now, the question is, why did the United States start this major conflict in the first place? Well, the reason being, they claim, was that Assad uh, needed to be overthrown, the president of Syria. And so the United States arms the ISIS groups, arms the Free Syrian Army, everything they could do to cause chaos to try to overthrow Assad. But the real reason behind this is to get the people out of this part of western Syria. And this is why you see all the battles around, uh, around Damascus and the different cities and towns all on the western side. The reason being is because it's huge, vast oil field right here. And if we have people living in these cities here, how are they going to be able to drill for oil? So the United States needed to create a havoc to actually displace all of the people living in this region, create a war, create a civil war, and get them all out. But Russia, some people may not remember that Russia also has a very strategic interest in this whole thing because Russia actually 
made an agreement with Mahmoud Abbas already over this whole area there. Um, let me just take you to the article on this. This, is, this was back in uh, 2014, I believe it was. Um, and, oh gosh, where is this at now? Yes, here it is. Uh, this was on Israel National News. It was on uh, uh, April the 11th of 2015. And the, the title of the article is uh, Abbas to sign accords with Putin in Moscow. Keep in mind when all these things are taking place. Look at the dates here. This is April the 11th of 2015. Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas in Moscow on Monday where the issue of the Middle East peace talks will be raised. Russian authorities announced Thursday the two leaders will hold talks concerning key aspects of Russian-Palestinian relations and their future with a particular attention on the trade, economy, and humanitarian, humanitarian sectors, the Kremlin said in a statement according to the AFP. There will also be an exchange of ideas of the process of Israeli-Palestinian talks and other problematic regional situations. The statement continued, adding that North Africa would also be on the agenda. Can somebody help me to understand why would Mahmoud Abbas be engaging with issues with Russia outside of their own area that they're claiming to be there, as the West Bank as it's called. It's not really the West Bank at all as Israel, but they're claiming this to be their own. The Russian leader is making a deal with them as if they're already a state. Now, when I say as if they're already a state, you must also remember earlier this year, after all this took place, we also find that the Vatican recognizes the Palestinian people as a state, declares them to be a state. Russia, though, here in April, is signing a deal with the Palestinian people as, as if they are a state. Russia knew what was going to happen. Now, let's look at this a little further, this article here. The Palestinian Authority ambassador to Moscow, Fayyid Mustafa, said Abbas would sign several intergovernmental accords during his three-day visit to Russia. Russia has often provided support for the PA in the past, signing a massive 1 billion natural gas project in Gaza with the PA last January during a similar visit by Abbas. That, by the way, was 2015 in January. Uh, during that same visit, Abbas urged Putin to play a greater role in the peace talks with Israel. That request came mere months before the PA torpedoed ongoing talks by unilaterally signing an international courts and sealing a unity deal with Hamas. Just last October, Russia announced its support for the PA's UN bid for trying to force Israel into a 2017 timeline in which to withdraw from Judea and Samaria, the bid was shot down in a vote. It won't be shot down again, though. Ties between the Palestinian Liberation Organization, terrorist group, and the Soviet Union began in 1970 when the PLO founder and the art terrorist Yasser Arafat visited Moscow. In 1988, the Soviet Union officially recognized Palestine as a state following the proclamation of the Palestinian National Council in Algeria that year. Okay? Now, it's just fascinating to see how these things have actually been going on. So let's back up just a little bit, though. All right? Let's take a look at some other key issues. Remember, Russia is in Syria getting control of what's going on in Syria. And I'm going slow with this because I want you to understand what's going on. All right? Now, before I go any further, let me first take you to Psalm, in the book of Psalms, where David actually speaks here, and I want to share with you the Psalm 80, as people call it, the Psalm 83 war. Psalm 83 is not a war, but it is a confederacy of groups. Keep thou not silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Now this is Israel crying out to God. But obviously, God is silent during this particular intervention that's going to happen. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've lifted up their leader. 
Now what's interesting, in this case here, the leader is Pope Francis. And those that hate thee, Esau, God said he's hated Esau. We find in Obadiah, clearly it identifies the Roman Catholic Church as being Esau's descendants. For God says, Esau was as one of them against your brother Jacob. When everything that he had, when he was scattered to all the world and the temple and everything was destroyed, it speaks of it being the house of Judah there. That's in the book of Obadiah. Then God further identifies that Esau is, and Obadiah in fact shows a future event in verse 16 where he says, and you shall drink upon my holy mountain and, they shall and the nation shall continually drink. It's in the masculine plural showing that only men would participate in a drinking ceremony on Mount Zion. The Pope of Rome did that very thing at the Passover time in 2014. Don't forget when Pope Benedict was in place there, the Israeli government gave an official seat at the tomb of David for the Pope, making him, in effect, the king of Israel. So now we find out, though, that this covenant that's coming along, this confederacy, according to Psalm 83, they've lifted up their head, their leader. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They're concerned about the two witnesses. That's who the hidden ones are. Sufanecha. Sufanecha is the word for hidden. The hidden ones are the two witnesses. They're hidden and nobody knows where they're at. They're here on the scene now. I can tell you that already. I do know that for a fact. They're here. God will be the one that determines when they're made known to the world to bring the message that God intends to do. But they've consulted. In other words, they're trying to figure out what are we going to do when these two witnesses come? Because they will throw the monkey wrench in the whole situation that we're trying to deal with. Verse 4, they have said, Come let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. The World Council of Churches will not acknowledge Israel as Israel, but rather they call it Palestine. And of course the Catholic Church, all the Arab nations, all want to do away with the name of Israel altogether and totally Iran Hezbollah, Hamas, the so-called Palestinian Authority are all wanting to totally annihilate Israel. Keep Hezbollah in mind. There's a reason I want you to remember Hezbollah. Now, he says, For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. They've made their alliance. they put everything together. When I say they put everything together, you remember, what was it, I believe in June, that Pope Francis met with Vladimir Putin? That's exactly right. They were putting their plans together. Now, he also met with him the year before. See? But in this particular year, in 2015, they had a very serious meeting together. They were plotting and planning. See, and in fact, in July, let me just pull this up for you real quick. In July of this year, I'd actually done a video myself, and I want to pull the date up for you. It's published on July 11th of 2015, if you want to look it up. The title I have in here, shocking as this may sound, it may very well be true, President Putin has been growing in power and notoriety on, glo on a global scale, even has met with Pope Francis on a number of occasions, but these two men do share one thing in common, communism, and Putin has the military might to help enforce the Pope's future plans. I actually entitled the video, The Pope of Rome Has a New Warlord. Now, oddly enough, Jonathan Kahn on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth, published on September the 4th, 2015, only just a few weeks ago, he claims a very similar thing that God had showed me all the way back in July, that the crown had been taken off the United States as a super power and placed on Russia. One person wrote me and said that I quoted that wrong. It's the vice versa. It was China. He says, go back and play the video again. I've played it several times to make sure, no, Jonathan Kahn claims that the crown of the super, super power, military power was moved from the United States and placed onto Vladimir Putin. Where did he get the idea from? Sid Roth makes it look like he's Elijah the prophet. And this is where Jonathan got it from. Well, I'm no prophet, but one thing's for sure, months before he said it, we'd already shared that with you as well. Now God is unraveling this whole thing that's about to unfold here in the Middle East and Israel. 
It also says here that the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, the tabernacles, or the word tents in Hebrew there, but it ref references churches in this regard here. Edom being Rome, the Catholic Church. So the churches, the World Council of Churches, have come together along with the Ishmaelites and the Moab and the Hagarenes and Gebal and Ammon, and it goes on down, lists all the different Arabic nations and regions. And these things do include Iran, Syria, Jordan, all these different countries. Countries. See, and very possibly, we get on down with this, we're also finding out, according to Ezekiel 38, the Gog and Magog invasion. Could that be what's actually happening? Clearly, there is a war about to unfold, and the whole purpose for this war is to gain control of the oil fields there that are going to be there. Now, Russia is not going to just outright and attack Israel. Russia is going to let Hezbollah do it. Let me bring you another article to your memory here. <clears throat> and this is what I was wanting to do is to get people to understand why is there an antifada going on now? It's to justify the different entities around Israel to attack Israel. There is no, it's, this is not being done just out of coincidence. It's all plotted. You see, the Pope of Rome, when he met Vladimir Putin back earlier on this year, they were planning, they were plotting and planning. This was the Psalm 83 was being fulfilled at this time. Even, even before Russia comes and meets with the Pope of Rome, uh, Basar Assad sends to the Pope of Rome what conditions he would take and step down on. That was kind of an odd thing to begin with. And by the way, when you look at the Confederacy here, the very last part of who joins in with it, let me drop down to that. That's, uh, oh, let's see here. Yes, it's in, uh, let's go to verse 7. Gebal and Ammon and Amalek and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher also is joined with them. That's Syria. See, Syria has also joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. You see, Syria gets into the game, but it's right at the last moment. But they have been planning this all along. Of course, China is sending troops down there. They want to be in on the action. The Iranians are sending forces over there. What? They're getting ready for a ground war with Israel. They don't want the place to be nuked because if it's nuked, then nobody will be good for no one. The radiation levels would be too high. But you have to understand, Pope Francis needs Russia there because it's his new warlord. He's Catholic. He's Russian Orthodox. But this is why you saw the Catholic Church building relationship with the Russian Orthodox uh, equivalent of a pope in Russia making sure he keeps control of everything. And now Russia, Putin, is very supportive of what Pope Francis' desires are. And they have a same communistic belief. Now, let's take a look at something here, though. Now, um, I mentioned to you, let's go back and look at Hezbollah. This happened in January of this year. You remember when Israel struck uh, a particular convoy of vehicles there in Syria that killed an Iranian general and one of the top commanders of Hezbollah because they were there spying on how to do an attack into Israel from Syria. Again, what is it? The whole thing is being plotted. This, this is Psalm 83. was all going on the entire time. See, Psalm 83 has been fulfilled and people don't realize it. You, you think it's a war, but Psalm 83 is only the plans for the war. And God is being silent as this is going on because Israel is asking, God, don't be silent. You're, you see what your, enemy are, your enemies are doing to us. They're preparing, they're planning, and they're plotting against us. Okay? So what do we find? It says here, this was in an article on January the 30th of 2015. It's in the VOA News. The... Uh, uh, it says, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah said the Lebanon-based military group does not want war with Israel, but is prepared to go into battle in any place at any time. Another headline actually says, no, Hezbollah, we are not ready for war 
and that was on stateofmind.com. I believe also Israel National News re reported that as well. I couldn't find the article to share that with you, but they said that they're not ready for war at this time because they were involved with dealing with ISIS in Syria. You see, Hezbollah has been helping battle ISIS for the, for the Syrian government, Basra Assad. Because why? It's an American-backed group there. The Free Syrian Army, all American-backed groups, and Hezbollah has been fighting with them. All right? So what happens? Now Russia has come in, and Russia has taken over the battle. But remember, the head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, stated they were not ready as of yet. This was in Israel National News. I, I wish I could have found the article, but I didn't have enough time to find it to bring it up for you. But they said they were not ready as yet. They, could not, they didn't want to deal with two fronts at one time. But all they did was they retaliated. But no escalation. In fact, Israel said they were going to excuse me, retaliate, but they never did. Israel refused to retaliate. Why? Is there something going on inside the Israeli government? Is there is somebody putting pressure on Netanyahu to stay his hand on retaliation because they're working with the Pope of Rome? I believe that's true. We know Shimon Perez is very tight with the Pope of Rome. He's the one in 1993-1994 that actually signed when this Oslo Accord was going on, the real accord that was going on was the deal being made with the Pope of Rome to internationalize Jerusalem. Joe Bainerman, Barry Chamish, both Israeli investigative journalists exposed the entire plot of what the Pope of Rome was then doing with uh, Shimon Perez and making an alliance to internationalize Jerusalem. Because see, the Pope just wants Jerusalem. He doesn't care if Russia gets the oil or, or if anybody else gets the oil. And remember when we had Avi Lipkin on in the interview, what did Avi actually say? He said it's all about the oil. It's not about the Jews. It's not about the, the Christians. Everything is about the oil. Avi, I mean, he's got some great and smarts when it comes to these things. Now, Hezbollah retaliated Wednesday with a rocket attack on Israeli convoy along the disputed Lebanon-Israeli border, killing two Israeli soldiers. Israel responded with airstrikes and shelling. A Spanish peacekeeper with the UN peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon was also killed in Wednesday's exchange. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blamed Iran for Wednesday's flare-up, the biggest escalation of fighting there since 2006 war between Israel and Iranian-backed Hezbollah. But friends, my Israeli brothers and sisters, get ready. Because I believe, and I'm not prophesying this, I believe that Hezbollah is ready to attack Israel now. They have the backing of Russia. Russia will not instigate the battle because, unfortunately, the Israelis really believe that Russia has got their back. In an email that I received from a, a high-up official in Israel stated that when the, when, the, when the flotilla things were happening with Turkey, that he said, Steve, we don't have to worry about Russia. Russia has already made an agreement with us that they would have our back in case Turkey tried to attack us. It's all along been a plot being planned against Israel. And unfortunately, some people in the Israeli government, and I don't know who it is other than Shimon Perez, are part of this conspiracy. You see, even George Bush and many of his televised interviews, if you recall back, he calls the Arabs in Iraq and different countries, Syria, all these are the forces of evil. They're terrorists. He even says that God has led him to bring these people down. God tells President Bush to attack and to kill them. But at the same token, and this is the hypocrisy in his statement, he says, now God is telling me, this is near the end of his, uh, his, his uh, time in office. He said, God is telling me, just paraphrasing it, God is telling me to help the Palestinians get a state and the Israelis to get security. Now he just tells you in earlier statements, God is showing him that all the Arabs are terrorists. Axes of evil, as he calls Iran. Are the Palestinians any different? Now, let me say this in making that comment. I'm showing you the hypocrisy in his statement. I believe that there's true Arabic people 
that do not want violence. I still believe that it is a minority of them that want the violence. Now, that minority may be 50% or 45% in that case, whatever the case may be. But I know there's true Arabic people that believe also in the Messiah, Yeshua. You understand? So I'm not against the Arabic people. I'm not against the people that call themselves Palestinians. I believe there, I know some that are true believers. There is a sister that's been watching faithfully on here. I won't call her name. She is an Arabic woman who come to know Yeshua. She's followed this ministry for probably three years now. Dedicated, loves the Lord. Not all Arabic people are bad people. I do not believe that. But I do see that the war is about to take place. Hezbollah is going to attack Israel in the very coming, if not days, weeks, or whatever. The intifada that we are seeing in Israel from every side, Gaza is starting to launch rockets. They're going to really step up the, the attack. When Gaza hits, then Hezbollah is going to hit. They're going to go in and they're going to invade on the northern border of Israel and the Golan. What's the reason? To take the Golan. Russia is not going to get involved in it because Russia is only going to protect Hezbollah from the United States doing airstrikes on them. Because at this point, the United States is going, to be, is going to be in a situation where they need to back Israel. They'll be the only one. But if, if the United States, if it's under Obama, he's just going to stay out of the conflict. Now, this brings us to another prophecy that we must look at. According to Micah's prophecy, Israel becomes into a great travail. Micah chapter 4. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halteth a remnant, and her that was cast afar off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth for evermore. It's a prophecy that's being fulfilled. But then God says something strange. He brings them back. He said he's going to reign over them forevermore. But then God says in verse 8, chapter 4, And thou, tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come even. The first dominion, the kingdom, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, why dost thou, verse 9, why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? You see, Prime Minister Netanyahu was anointed by Mike Evans when he was barely out of his teens or even maybe a teenager, 19, something like 19, 20, 21, right after the death of his brother Jonathan. He was anointed by Mike Evans to be king and prophesied over that he'd be prime minister of Israel not once but twice. And he's in his second, so-called his second time. You know, we know they've gone through elections and stuff, but he's still staying in there. So it's really technically a sec second time as it was prophesied. Prophesied whatever, or was it planned? I don't know the answer to that. All right? Now, God asked the question, is there no king in thee? You see, Israel wanted a king when Samuel the prophet was there. God said, what would happen when they got a king? And God told Samuel, they didn't reject you, they've rejected me. Now, Israel has a king, but unfortunately, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not delivering Israel. Politics my Jewish brothers and sisters will not deliver you. You will have to sincerely cry out to God as it is in Psalm 83. God shows you're crying out already. Be not still, O God. Hold not thy peace because it appears that their peace is being held. That God's peace is being held back and he's not doing anything about it. So he says to them also, has thy counselor perished? God now is asking, what did you do with Mashiach when he did come? According to the Talmud, he would be that the Messiah had to come before the destruction of the second tem temple. That's because you looked at the prophecy of Daniel. So why didn't he come then? If you don't think he came, I believe he did come. I believe it was Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. Which only begs to differ, why did the church in Constantine burn all the true writings that Jesus did speak about? That's prophesied to be restored as well. We'll talk about that on another video. But he goes, pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. You pleading with Rome? 
You see, when Yeshua was here, Rome was in control then 2,000 years ago, and Rome once again is in control of Jerusalem. And now the Jewish people will be forced out. Judea and Samaria, what we call the West Bank, or what they call the West Bank, which is really Judea and Samaria, Jews will be forced out of there. And we're going to be dwelling, guess where? In the fields. See? Now also many nations were gathered against thee that say, let, us, let, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not that the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel, for he shall gather them as the sheaves unto the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine, uh, thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt... Uh, beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. So God will rescue the Jewish people in this battle that is upcoming. Now, before, before I break away with you, before we end this broadcast, those of you that are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the image here. You can see, as I've already started it for you, this was aired by RT News, I, I, if, I, if I understand right, the United States was not, did not permit the viewing of this video by RT News, where Vladimir Putin clearly, clearly accuses the United States of arming ISIS. I'm going to read to you the subtitles, because they may be hard for you to see there, uh, on part of this here. Let me, let me just share this with you here, and then we'll conclude in the matter of this whole thing. Putin says here, can... Uh, can stay silent on many. Uh, I can. I can stay silent on many things, but as I always say, and Dominic here has just mentioned it on uh, one-sided actions in the continuous search for the next alliance and coalition, which are predetermined. That's interesting. Coalitions are predetermined. Think of Psalm 83. Okay, Psalm 83 predetermined. This is not the method that seeks to discuss and agree on mutual grounds of understanding. These are one-sided actions. They lead to crisis. Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Who armed, he asked the question, who armed the Syrians that were fighting with Assad? Who created the necessary political infor uh, informational climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of the arms to the area? Do you really not understand as who is fighting in Syria? They are mercenaries mostly. Do you understand they are paid money? Vladimir Putin states. So they are, uh, so they are them, <clears throat> excuse me, and pay them a certain amount. I even know what the amounts are, so they fight. They have the arms. You can't get them to return the weapons, of course, at the end. Then they occupy the oil fields. They start extracting the oil, and this oil is purchased by somebody. Where, where are the sanctions on the parties purchasing the oil? In other words, he's getting sanctions on his country because uh, of the Ukrainian crisis, so he's asking the question, where are the sanctions in on those that are, are, are purchasing the oil? Because it's the United States. He's clearly identifying the United States. This is why the U.S. has done these attacks. But they need more oil fields there, not just these. He is telling it like it is. But the problem is, is what you have to understand, no matter how much he tells it like it is, he's still working for the Pope of Rome. Psalm 83 has actually been fulfilled. They've been planning it all along. Now the war comes. Now comes the Gog and Magog battle. Now, we say the Gog and Magog battle, but I have to side more with John. John actually speaks of the Gog and Magog battle being fought at the end of the millennium. Because where would we get seven years for them to clean up all the mess? Well, some would say in the tribulation period. But the war would have to be fought and ended before the tribulation period. And there's a possibility. I don't discount that. But I personally believe that we don't have seven years left. I believe when your two witnesses come on the scene, it will end shortly after their death. There's a lot to think about, friends. Let me just sum this up. In, 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 one, in a few more words here. The intifada is taking place in order to bring in Hezbollah to get Gaza for Israel to be attacked from all sides. 
There will come attacks from the Syrian border. Russia, though, will not get engaged in that. Russia is only there to protect all the groups that they counseled with when the Pope of Rome met Vladimir Putin earlier this year. He met with the Pope of Rome. They were conspiring together along with the different religious leaders of the world that have come in and joined the Vatican. You have to get all the religious backing there in order to have the, the, the support of the different nations. Iran has come down. Why are they bringing troops in? The Iranian soldiers will also get involved in the fight. They're putting down and killing all of the American armed factions that the, that the U.S. government has armed to, to try to destabilize Syria. But in, in the end of it all, the United States did a great service for Russia and all the other different countries around, because why? In doing this, now they've actually destabilized the region, they've actually caused the people to become refugees and have sent hundreds of thousands of refugees out of the area so they can drill for more oil in more places. Let me quickly share with you, again though, uh, when Russia, when he met with Abbas, he signed the accord. This is according to Israel National News. All right, this again was this year in April, on April the 11th. He met with the Pope of Rome a little bit after there. He actually, Russia has often provided support for the PA, it says in the article here, in the past signing a massive 1 billion natural gas project in Gaza with the PAs last January during a similar visit by Abbas. During the same visit, Abbas urged Putin to play a greater role in the peace talks with Israel. There's a great stake for Russia right now. Russia needs the PLO to have its own state because Russia has an agreement there and Russia needs that to happen. Um, Hezbollah, different headlines, seeks revenge but not war over Israeli airstrike. That was on Al Jazeera back when this all took place uh, earlier in the year. Uh, no Hezbollah, we are not ready for war. Uh, stated the state of mind.com. Hezbollah chief says does not want war but ready for one. This was on VOA news. See all these different things coming up but now Hezbollah is ready because they're not having to deal with ISIS anymore. Vladimir Putin meets uh, Putin to meet Pope Francis in Rome to discuss the Ukrainian crisis. Now I want to read real quick this was in June of 2015. Again Psalm 83, they're meeting together. They've lifted up their head. They have chosen the Pope of Rome to be the main man. Okay, he's the main man. When the article was written here, it says, Vladimir Putin will raise the Ukraine crisis and the plight of Christians in the Middle East during a meeting with Pope Francis in Rome on Wednesday. Pope Vladimir Putin is concerned about the Christians? Well, he is Catholic, and he is very faithful Catholic. He says, it will be Mr. Putin's second meeting with Pope Francis and the latest episode in a long-running but sometimes fraught relationship between the Kremlin and the Vatican. Notice the next sentence. At Wednesday's meeting, the President of Russia and the Bishop of Rome will cover specific international problems. It has nothing to do with Ukraine. They were dealing with Syria. They were dealing with Israel. Remember, in 1967, Israel, in the Six Days War, took the Golan Heights. Before that point, Syria had control of all this land. Now, I'm 100% behind Israel all the way when I say that parts of Lebanon, parts of Syria, parts of Jordan, even by the British mandate, but according to the biblical mandate, this land does belong to the Jewish people. And God said that he will bring the 12 tribes back to this particular land. But before the 67 war, that area in the Golan was part of Syria. So Russia, in this way of thinking, when Hezbollah attacks and, uh, and goes into the Golan, Russia will be 100% behind it and will tell Israel, you took it from Syria, you need to step back and stop. And then you're going to see the, the two-state solution that's already been signed, you're going to see it come into effect. You'll see all the Jews pushed out, those that are not murdered. 
and they'll be dwelling in the fields. You notice this, the reason why it says the fields, in other words, all the mountainous regions, which are the east part of Israel, where the Palestinians have taken control of Samaria and Judea, actually Samaria and Judea, they're going to be pushed out of these mountainous regions, and they're going to be dwelling in the lowlands, like it was originally when Israel became a state in 1948. It'll take God to intervene for the Jewish people. I believe the first intervention is going to come with the two witnesses. You remember in Revelation it says that if any man tries to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and destroys their enemies. That doesn't mean that a ball of flame comes leaping out of their mouth, but much like Elijah, when the 50 soldiers come up to try to take him before the king in disrespect, he called fire down out of heaven and devoured all 50 of those men. It's that their word of what they say will take place. And God will bring judgment. God will deliver Israel. And he's only delivering Israel for one reason. To give her time. To recognize her sins that she committed 2,000 years ago against their Messiah. Zechariah will actually be, begin to be fulfilled. They will look upon him that they have thrust through. As Rabbi Tobias Singer says, it's not the word pierced. He's right. It's not pierced. It's thrust through. But it is true because the Roman soldier thrust him through with a spear to release symbolically the Spirit of God that was within him that could come back upon the believers. Israel, it will be your time. But it comes with a great duress. It's the only way God can get his people to recognize where they went wrong. Then the Bible says they separate each one to their own house in Zechariah 12. The house of David and the house of Nathan and them and their wives apart, Orthodox tradition. The house of Benjamin. Of course, David and Nathan are from the tribe of Judah. Benjamin is a Benjamite. Or Shimei, actually, I'm sorry, Shimei, who is a Benjamite. The house of Levi and the families that remain, the Samaritans. My friends, it'll be a great day. Israel's eyes will begin to come open, but it'll also be a dreadful day. Wars, rumors of wars. Psalm 83 is being fulfilled right before your eyes. This is part of the reason of the Intifada at this very moment. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment to get an idea of what is going on. I trust it's a blessing for you. God bless you. Shalom.